Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends, and once again, thank you for stopping by. Boom! Tell me a falcon. What a car. And if you've not seen the first part of this video, this thing is in superb shape. Um, does need a few jobs doing, so we're going to do all those jobs in this video today. The view of this is to take this car from this stage and get it ready to run. So by that, I mean um, we've got a new set of tyres to stick on it. We want to do a tyre writing in yellow, which I think is going to look superb. We've got a full bearing kit to um, fit to it. What else have we got? The steering, um, I don't know what you call them, steering arms were missing. So I've sourced some um, threaded at one end 3mm um, rod. I've got the original turnbuckle ends for it. Um, so we need to make a set of those. Um, what else was there? I've got some Spectrum modern day radio gear to fit in it. I was going to go very old school with this with a three step, but winter's here, the snow's here. So I don't know why I'm saying that. That's got nothing to do with it, but probably just because I'm lazy. I've got a new Speedo to try, which I've got a couple of these now. Um, looks like TTS, 320 amp, 2, two to 3 S LiPo, 4 to 9 cell, NIM. Um, and that's all it says on it. It's a cheap, cheerful speedo. Comes with a Dean's connector already on it, and a switch. A um, couple of jumpers for the forward reverse and stuff like that, and probably the battery. So, and it's a nice, linky, dinky little unit. And obviously, I'm sticking in a Tactic TSX35 Sport Servo. Cheap and cheerful again, but does the job for me. So there's a fair bit to get through. So. I think the first bit is obviously going to get the bearing set in. Um, I'll do, yeah, we'll do the, we'll do the bearing first. On the, obviously, there's four ball bearings to go in the front uh, for front wheels, but we'll do the gearbox section first. While I'm doing that, we'll whiz the shocks off. That one feels great. That one feels great. That one feels great something I don't know about that one I just want to check and make sure they've all got the same or the correct oiling and what have you so just before we start if you are new to RC the ultimate and best upgrade by far you can do to any RC car or to any Tamiya car um, is fit a full set of ball bearings in there um, as a the majority of you know Tamiya kits even today come with plastic bushings and um, I don't know why but they do um, a cheap full set of um, Tamiya Falcon bearings costs about $15 on eBay, if that. You can probably get them cheaper. Um, and it's just the best investment you can get. What's the biggest benefit from bearings? Most people go, well, you get the added runtime out of your battery. Um, yeah, I guess that's a big part of it. But I think what's missed by a lot of people about bearings is it doesn't wear out everything else on your car. These bushes and even the, the brass bushes that they use on these spindles, eventually, I, I mean, they're, I, I don't know if those bushes are new, but there's so much play on those already. You know, and obviously the, 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 there's basically zero play with bearings. But as I say, it's a damage to the rest of the car that the bushes do because they're not moving parts as it were where obviously you go to full set of bearings everything's moving and then if, even if you drive these cars a year long all you have to do is buy another set of bearings and you're good to go again keep up to them stick the bearing oil in them keep them clean that's all you got to do and the payback you'll get for them is immense so first things first we'll start stripping this down um and let's get into the gearbox, make sure it's got oil, fit the new bearings in, bang that back on, check the shocks, and then that's the back end good to go. Then we'll have to take the front end off because we've got to get the servo in and we've got to make sure that we make these to the correct length. Um, that might be a little bit tricky because I've never done that before. Anyway, let's get cracking. So first job to do is with the um, three-step speedo out, which is two screws here, two screws on the resistor and take that unit out. Um, I'm then going to whiz all four shocks off, um, and then it's just a case of getting the gearbox off. There's four, let's see if I can put these in the camera, four screws there that um, we have to slacken and take out. 
Um, and then you just take the um, both rear arms off. And then when the gearbox comes off, we'll take the yellow cage off. Not sure what I'm going to do motor-wise now. Um, I'm going to run standard 540, but I think I'll stick a new one in there. Um, just so I know it's it's running right. Um, obviously, I don't know the history of this one. So um, let's get cracking with that. Right, that's the most of the strip down done. So as I say, gearbox is all unbolted off. And then we've stripped the gearbox down further, taken the cage off, taken the motor out. Um, looking at the motor, um, the gearbox looks to have plenty of grease in there and the pinions and well, it looks brand new to be honest. Um, what else have we done? So I've left the arms now, checked the oil on the shocks and is, the, the oil's fine. Um, so we do have to put bearings in here but um, I'll leave that until I've got this gearbox stripped. Um, so next stage is I guess these cups just, yeah they just pull out and then we've got one, two, three, we've got five bolts. Um, yeah five bolts and then they'll pull apart and then uh, let's have a look what the inside looks like. So if you've never seen a Falcon gearbox before, there you have it. Very basic. We've got a state of the art ceramic ball they fitted. Not. Look at that. <laughs> but it all works fine. Plenty of grease in there, we'll put more in. But as you can see, there's your plastic bush. That's the first one we've got to get out. Only one in that side. Then on that side, we've got another one. We've got the small bearing that goes there. And I don't think, I think that on the other side of this just, yeah, there's no bearing, but a big bearing. Oops, big bearing in there. So, let's get some grease out. Anyway, I'll leave that loose. Let's get some grease out and then um, get the correct bearings that we're going to need. And that's it, actually only four bearings. That's the three um, same size bushes are taken out and then the small one. So one, bearing into there, one into the other side, and then on this um, spur gear we've got the small one which fits, and then we've got one on the other side. So that's it. So now I'm just case of greasing it back up, and I'm gonna put it together, and then we'll have a look at those drive arms. Right, that's gearbox built back up. Pretty straightforward to be honest. Um, all feels pretty smooth. It's, uh, it's hard to spin the gearbox with the motor in, but you get the gist of it. Um, I've decided to keep the original motor that was in it. Um, having a look at it, it looks in pretty good nick. So, And I do like the white end bell. It just shows signs of age, which I prefer to a, a new shiny 540. So next stage now, we'll bolt the cage back on and then we'll just disassemble this and take the adapter off and I believe there's two bearings to go in either side so that's next job right that's the bearings in so as I said two bearings in either side of there I've just screwed that back on so I don't want to lose them um, I didn't notice a massive amount of difference when um, I built the gearbox back up being ball raced they were they didn't they, you couldn't tell there was a lot of slot there However, in these arms, it was ridiculous with the old bushes. This thing was really wobbling. Um, and obviously now there's a pair of bearings in each side and that has dramatically um, sharpened that up, which is amazing. And then I had four bearings left, which obviously just go two in each front wheel, which we've done. Um, so that's the bearing set in. So next job now is just to bolt this chassis and the arms, sorry, bolt, bolt the gearbox and the rear arms back onto the chassis. Right, and that's that back together and everything is nice and smooth. Both sides. And the, uh, got a bit of grease on my fingers, but the diff's very smooth. As I say, struggling to turn the main gearbox a little bit because of grease, but as I say, you get the gist of it. So that's that's the back end complete. So now we've got to work on this front end. Now, two bolts, two bolts, and the front end just comes off. Um, and then we've got to get the um, steering servo bolted into the chassis. Um, and then, as I say, we've got to figure out how to do these rods and what have you to get this steering. I've, I've only really got one shot at this with it with it not being fully threaded rod 
it's only threaded at the end. So when I make the first bend, it has to be absolutely cock on. So we'll unbolt this front end and we'll get that steering servo bolted down. Right, I'm just gonna do some mixing and matching. Um, the servo horn, um, I've had to change and I've got the one off the frog, um, as you can see, and I've just put the, the one I thought would work, I'll just put that on the frog for now. Um, looking at it, that one will work fine anyway when I come to restore that. But um, yeah, I needed a bit of distance, under, I've not screwed this on yet, but I need a bit of distance underneath there. Um, I've now got to see, once I put the front end on, if that clears the front, otherwise I might have to trim that off and just use those two outer holes. I knew this would be a little bit of a mission, to be fair, but um, anyway, let's tidy the table up and we'll get back onto this. Right, so I've just been messing around with edges, trying to make these steering joints, and uh, I've done the best I can. Um, I haven't got the, the tool in to make it sharp bends. Um, anyway, jumped on Facebook to ask someone for a measurement and somebody had a spare set for uh, $15 posted, so <laughs> I've just ordered them. Um, but I've just finished it off, I'll just turn the transmitter on, I've just connected the power because I wanted to obviously um, neutralise the steering, but as I say, it's it's not exact, but it'll, uh, it'll get me out of trouble, I suppose, until the uh, new ones come, because I want to try and get this running in the snow. Anyway, as I said, it'll get me out of trouble. Um, and then when the new ones come, it's a really easy fit. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get the bumper back on, um, and then I think we'll get the tires and the wheels sorted out and get the tire writing done. And um, yeah, let's do that next. Look at that thing. Oh my days. <laughs> oh my word. It's It was never one of my favorites ever, but um, I've had that many since I've been sort of doing Tamiya and I've I've never run one and this is the one that's going to run it's going to be a gentle run granted but it's it's going to run it's going to see some action um so I just thought I'd build it once I built it up and I just put it back together I just thought I'd show you it because um look at that front suspension's awesome really smooth backs well it's Tamiya Falcon suspension um diffs and what have you very smooth um they feel gearbox a lot better now but uh, i'm very very happy with that so far so as i say the next stage i'm going to um do the tire writing which as i always show you in case you're interested i use a sharpie what's it extra fine point and it is oil based which is quite important i believe um give it a really good shake up before and it'll take about two coats um, both tyres are brand new so the first coat usually is a little bit bitter um, but I'll, as I say I'll do about next job but I just thought I'd uh, show you it when it's built because that just looks awesome it'll look way better with yellow tyre writing as well and I have also just decided I'm going to work with the guys Sean's going to post the um, steering arms for me tomorrow so what day are we on? It's Tuesday, so I post it on Wednesday. So I should say on Friday or Saturday. So I'm gonna hang on before I run it because I want the proper I want the proper steering travel um, when I run it. Otherwise, it's just gonna make it a bit awkward. But um, anyway, let's get these um, this tire writing done. Right, that's the tire writing done, and absolutely love it. Um, I'm getting to be a big fan of the yellow writing. Obviously, I do believe, in my opinion, the car does need some yellow on it for it to work. Otherwise, I'd, I'd always go white. But you'll see in a minute when I stick these on the car just how good they look. Um, this is probably one of the easiest um, Tamiya tyres to do the writing on. Um, the ridges are quite high and the writing is quite big. So it, it does flow pretty well. Still easy to make mistakes if you rush. The fronts are not as good as the backs, and that's because, although these are new fronts, um, they could even be original, so the paint didn't take to the rubber. These are obviously re re tyres, brand new, and again, just went on a lot better. But um, I hope you agree, they, uh, they absolutely do look stunning. Um, again, sorry to go on, but I get a lot of comments, what do you use? 
and that's the Sharpie markers we use. As I say, oil based um, and it's extra fine tip, which is really important. Um, obviously standard white, we do all the colours at your local hobby store. Uh, and again, you don't have to go, or I don't have to go to model shops for this, just hobby craft shops sell these pens. Uh, the cheap and you'll probably get I'd, I'd say you'd probably get about 10 sets of tyres done with one pen It's um, they, they do last for a long time anyway let's bang this on the car because I think you're going to like this ok I know I'm very biased but how good does that look seriously that is a serious thing of beauty this thing just takes me right back to the 80s. It's just one of those cars, given my age and what was around me back in the golden era of RC, this was one of those cars, same as the Blackfoot. Um, just looking at it now, I've got it finished. It just seriously just takes me back there to, what should we call it, much simpler times. I guess a lot of you guys will understand that, but um, what a thing. And I've got the gear in it now, which I'm gonna show you next, but that really does help with the suspension. As you can hear, the oil's working. That's, that front suspension is really super smooth. And the back's a lot better now. But, <laughs> what a thing. God, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be just looking at this all day now, cause I am that sad. Right, let's, um, let me show you the radio gear I've put in it. So it's a little crude, but I mean, it's it's good enough for what I'm doing. Um, I mean, this thing is generally only gonna get one run. And as I say, it's probably gonna be a gentle run. So, I, you know, it's not the tidiest of jobs. Because obviously the motor's right at the back and the length of the motor wires plus the speedo wires, you've got no alternative but to put the ESC on what actually was the, the for the battery plate for the, um, your four double air batteries back in the day um but it, it works perfectly i've run the wires through and underneath tie wrapped onto the cage and that works well um lipo battery lipo battery fits in perfectly but this is a tamiya racing pack size lipo and then i've just stuck down the receiver and the switch down here i do have to do something with the area up the antenna at the moment um, i just need to figure out what i'm going to do with that what I should have done in hindsight, and I could do it now, but I really can't be bothered. I should have mounted this up to the side and turned it so the receiver could have sat at the side of it. And then I could have run the antenna wire down this cage and up through the antenna and just put a little antenna on it. Mainly for looks more than anything, because this car looks okay with a little aerial sticking out of it. But um, as I say, I've not, I've not bothered. Um, and this will do for now, but... Um, yeah, that's really nice. Let's just stick some power through it now and make sure this is going to work. Right, last test before we finish with it for the day. So as I say, steering's not great, but new arms are on order. Yeah, that's cool. Obviously, I've moved the jumper to um, um, the correct battery. Um, obviously, you get NIM and, and LiPo. Um, so it's set to LiPo. It's um, also set to forward brake reverse, which is just what I prefer, to be honest. Well, guys, she's done and she's ready to rock. And I just love it. I really do. I've had this car a while and obviously didn't have the wheels and tyres on and things a little bits were missing and um I, I knew it was in great shape that's why i bought it um but it wasn't something i was looking at like a lot of my cars i tend to have a look at when i'm bored and what have you um but I, when i got this built up yesterday even before i did the tire writing i just had it on this table i was just like that is just a time machine for me you know memory wise and, and i know a lot of you guys watching this understand what i'm saying there's there's the certain cars where we've got we've we, we seem to have like a mental link to that piece of time in history. Falcon and the Blackfoot um, are, are that car for me. Also the Kyosho Salute for some reason. Every time I see a picture of one of those, it just takes me right back. It's like a time machine. Um, 
but yeah super excited i've got a lot of anticipation to get this thing running um obviously the snow's here now so it's going to be a snow run which is good yeah it's good because the car will stay cleaner if not wetter but it'll save the new tires which is quite important to me um as i say it'll be quite a gentle run there'll definitely be no jumps but um, there'll be some there should be some great snow action if i can get the camera closer close enough to it with it sliding around and it's kicking up snow nothing better i did a lot of that last winter check those videos out if you haven't um but um yeah anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that it is a real blast from the past this one for me um and as i said i'm probably just going to look at it for the rest of today uh, next up for me is i've just got to do exactly the same with the wild one um which is i need to take the gearbox off check it for ball races i don't know if it's if it's been fully ball race but i need to make sure it is fully ball race and then put a second set of electrics into that and the idea is to have the falcon and wild one just ready to run when i get the right weather that's the plan anyway so guys i'll shut up thank you so much for watching it's really appreciated remember if you want to support this channel please like comment share where you can and push this video out it only helps this channel grow um and if you are new to this channel please consider liking and subscribing to support us and if you do that smash that notification buzzer for our weekly videos but as always the most important thing is happy seeing.